Okay, so in today's tutorial, we're going to be tackling this sci-fi text design. These particles you're seeing are not done in Blender. I'll be covering that in the last part of the video, but we are going to be doing the text fracturing and things like that. I'm going to show you how to do that, and then we'll dive into another program to show you how I composited these dust particles. If you would like to get the project file of the scene you're seeing right now, I'm going to be providing that on Gumroad for a dollar. You guys on Patreon will be getting that for free. You can check the Patreon link in the description if you want to go check that out and support the tutorials. So we're going to be using Blender 2.8 here. So before we start, click on the little camera icon here where it says Render Engine. Switch it to Eevee if you're not already there. And we're going to be using Screen Space Reflections and Bloom. So turn that on here in your Eevee settings. So first thing we're going to do is hit Shift A and we're going to add in a text right here so I'm just gonna leave it at text but I want to make it all caps that just looks great for this kind of thing and then we're gonna go here to the text settings down here with a little a and right here on alignment I'm gonna put them both at center now when it comes to the font you can go ahead and pick any font you want if you go to Google and type in free fonts look up maybe in the sci-fi category you'll find something similar to what I'm using so I'm gonna go ahead and import the font that I'm gonna be using so this one's called Techno uh, Hideo, something like that. So if you just Google what, I'm, what you're seeing here, that's this font. All right, so now let's go to Geometry here in the text settings, and let's just click Extrude. I'm going to click it five times, so now we have this text here. Now I'm going to go up here to Edit, Operator Search. I'm going to type in Convert right here, Convert to right here, Mesh. So now if we hit Tab, now we have vertices. Now this is really bad topology if we're wanting to cell fracture this. So the way you do that is you go to the modifiers and you find the remesh modifier. So I'm going to give it, remove the disconnected faces, and I'm giving it an arc tree depth of 7. So apply that, and now we have really nice, good topology to fracture. So let's just go back to the operator search here and type in cell. Now if you don't see this, we're going to go up to the edit, preferences right here on add-ons type in cell and turn on the cell fracture uh, add-on now I already have it applied so I'm gonna go back to cell and click cell fracture now we have all these settings all we need to work on is source limit so that's 500 so we're gonna have 500 fractured objects for the noise slide it all the way to one so we have the uh, the shape that we want Recursion, we're going to give it a recursion of three. What recursion does is give you those little bitty uh, fractures rather than all being big and fairly equal sized. Now the most important part right here on mass mode is uniform. If you don't have it, if you have it on volume, you're going to have some glitched out spots and it's not going to work. Uniform is what you want to use if we're fracturing text. If you're just um, fracturing like a ball or like a triangle or something, you can use volume. But let's stick to uniform and click OK and now it's going to fracture my object here. So it's going to, now it's starting to do the uh, smaller pieces, give it a couple minutes, and we'll have it. All right, so now we have our object. I'm going to go ahead and delete the original text, and now we have all of this. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click one of them and hit A to select all of them. And right up here, I'm going to go on this little icon, click Individual Origins. Now this, you don't have to do it, but I like this on a design standpoint. Hit S and just scale them down slightly so we can get more of that fractured, broken text look that we're looking for. So now we have this. Now we need to make them move and animate. So what we're going to do is we're just going to click one of them. Now keep in mind which one you clicked on. Now let's make it a rigid body object. So go down here, click click rigid body, keep everything here, keep it active, keep it on convex hull, just like that. Now hit A, go to your operator search, and type in copy and click copy rigid body settings and that's going to copy that setting to all of these objects. Now if we press play they just fall and we don't want that. We want them to fall onto something. So shift A and we're going to add in a plane and we're going to scale it up to fit the text and then we're just going to bring it down to where it passes up our text just like that. Now take this plane keep it selected and click rigid body and instead of active make it passive so that it stays still and change convex hull to just mesh. Now if we press play, it falls right on there nicely and we got a bunch of objects. But they're not spreading out, we want this to be a cool animation. So what we're going to do is we're going to use force fields for that. Shift A, add a force field, and we're going to add force. 
Now let's keyframe how this is going to look. The way, I want the strength to end at 100. So if you go to the strength and type in 100 and you press play, it immediately shoots it out just like that. But I don't want it to happen. I don't want it to happen this fast. So we're going to keyframe it to get to 100. So starting at frame one, click this little dot right here to add a keyframe. And I'm going to count to three. One, two, three. And I'm going to give it a strength of 100 and insert keyframe. So it's going to ramp up to 100. So as we watch, and they go away, just the way we want. So now let's go ahead and add the camera. I'm gonna hit the, hit the tilde key, go to top, I'm gonna hit shift A and add my camera. And you can put the camera wherever you like, but I like to put it right up above to give it that standard front face MoGraph composition. So now if we press play, we see this. Just for a tip, if you're trying to see what's going on, you can actually change your mat cap so you click this little icon, go to matte cap here, and pick, say, this one. And then if you want to see every individual object, right in here in color, click random. And now you can see all the little objects individually so you can see what you're doing. Now, this isn't really necessary, but a little tip if you're working with a lot of objects and you want to see what you're doing. All right, now let's go ahead, let's go ahead and start shading this render. Now, if we just go to look dev, it's completely white, blown out. A lot of bloom going on. So let's go first off and let's add some lighting. If we just go to rendered, nothing happening. Our world setting is at gray. We can bring that up, that down. But let's make it black, but we're gonna change that actually. But first, let's go use an HDRI. If you've never used HDRIs, they're basically this big 360 image that is taken from a photo, really cool settings, and gives you realistic lighting. So we're gonna use HDRI Haven, and we're gonna click indoor I like these indoor ones and I'm just gonna go ahead and pick this market one just like that scroll down and I'm gonna download the 4k version so once you have your HDRI downloaded go to the color select that select environment texture now click open and open the HDRI you downloaded so now if you hit rendered you get lighting just like in look dev so let's start shading this we're gonna click this bottom and click a new Let's bring the blackness all the way down to the car, the uh, the color, not the blackness. And let's go ahead and bring the roughness all the way up, just sort of simulating a black background. And then let's hit H to hide that because we're going to apply this one material to all these objects. So let's click New, make it metallic, make it a little bit darker. Now just hit A to select everything, Control L, click Materials, and that links all of those materials together. So now it's too washed out. Let's not go ahead and turn down the bloom just yet. Let's go click on the shading tab and click Z to go to the rendered view. Now right up here it says object, click to world, and we're gonna change some stuff. So if you go to your preferences here and type in node wrangler, apply the node wrangler so that we don't have to put all this work in, hit control T and we get this mapping set up. So now what that's gonna do is we can start moving around our HDRI like this. So I'm gonna move the Y rotation here. So let's bring it the other way. I just want it to affect the top of our text here, kind of like that. And we can make our color a little bit darker, just like that. So I just want it to sort of graze the top. Right now it's too big. So now that we have this, let's go ahead and add, let's go ahead and add that green beam on the bottom. So let's go to mesh, let's add a cylinder, hit R, Y, 90 to bring it down like that. Scale them really far down. Just like that. Bring them down and I'm going to click on the scale tool here and bring it over, make it smaller and bring them like that. Let's add an emission material, make it emissive, make it green and we'll bring the strength up up until the interior of it turns kind of white. So it looks right, right around 60. So now we have this and we can press play and watch the animation go off all the way over there. Now let's go to the bloom and on the bloom color, change it to green so that we see that bloom there nice and green. Over there you can see the bloom affecting the greenness. Now if we press play, we can see these nice green reflections in our animation. So this looks like it's about 64 frames so we're gonna go down here and change it to 64 so that just that's all the frames we're working with when we go to render it and just press play for it to simulate 
and then go back. Just like that, boom, fixes itself. So first I'm just gonna change this background again, put the roughness at 10, make it more dark so it's even deeper black. And now we have this nice text animation. So what we need to do to render it, but we're not gonna be done once we render it because we need to apply that overlay and also reverse the text. So to render it, let's just change this from PNG to FFmpeg video on encoding, change it to MP4 on Kodak, change it from medium to perceptually lossless and save your file, click render and render animation. So once you finish rendering that, we're gonna open up my editor and we're gonna show you what I did after. All right, so now we're in just a basic editor. Now this is Premiere Pro, but everything we're doing here works in all the editors that you can find. There are some free ones out there, depending on what editor you use, but these are very basic principles of what I'm doing. So first I'm just gonna right click and I'm gonna reverse my clip. So I'm just gonna reverse the speed and now he's gonna come in. It's a little bit slow here, so it renders. Okay, so now it's gonna come in just like that. So we have this. Now we want it to stop at this last frame. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick the frame where I want it to stop. So I think this one right here. And in my, we're just gonna take a screenshot and we're gonna save it. Looks like this one right here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scale up here, cut it, and then add in my new screenshot. So it stops rather than stopping at that last frame. So now we can just watch the animation, play in just like that and stops. But I don't like how everything just stops immediately. There's no motion happening. To add some more interest, I found a free dust particles overlay. So all you have to do is Google overlay. There's tons of different kind of overlays that you can pick from. I'm just gonna use this dust particles overlay here. And depending on your editor, I'm gonna use what's called blend modes. And this one is gonna be called screen. And all it does is it takes the black and sort of makes it transparent. So now when I press play, it does all this crazy stuff. Now, of course, you can use particles to make them go around, things like that. But this cuts out your render time. You can use free assets that are provided you royalty free. And you don't have to worry about all that topology in this cutout a couple hours of time with rendering, modeling, and making sure the simulation works the way you want, as well as bokeh and all that kind of thing. So now you have this. I can just bring the opacity down a little bit and then go to the very end, cut this off, and now we have our animation. Comes in, we have all these cool dust particles, got a cool text animation, and it just flows in, and there you go. So there's the tutorial. I hope you liked what you saw. Hope you learned something, and thanks for watching.